probably I would say my best sighting of this little cat he is up on this fallen over tree and he looks absolutely regal up there he is going to be such a cool cat when he's a little bit older and he's chosen the best tree we could have asked for he's up on this fallen over marula and he keeps staring straight at us and we are eye level with him and there's just something about being on the same sort of level as one of these cats and look at him he is magnificent now you've left your well, mom has left you behind i can hear the vehicles following mom and that is a long way from where we are are you coming to say hello you can see he's just checking us out he just wants to see who we are and what we're doing so i'm just going to stay nice and still as he comes past because i don't want him to get a fright or anything like that hello boy wow i don't words can't describe when a leopard is not even two meters from you the feeling that you get and especially when he locks eyes with you and these sort of green aqua colored eyes just sort of look at you and it seems like he's just checking just to make sure you're not a threat to him and uh, the feeling that it happens when that when he looks is just something i can't explain where are you off to and like i say tundi's gone far i can hear the vehicles they almost sound like they're somewhere near twin dams road or weaver's nest area well it's actually weaver's nest not twin dams so it sounds like they're somewhere that side so i'm gonna just try and stay with little tumba and keep up with him because i don't think we're going to catch up with tundi that quickly so i'd rather stay with him and see what he gets up to as much as i love tundi this little guy is such a poser and is so pretty it's always a joy to spend time with him as well so let's just try and see if we can't stay with him now just now he was trying to hunt franklin's and it was quite comical to watch because he went bounding into this bush to stalk and he got into a low position to stalk and then as he was about to jump the franklin came up towards him and looked at him and he was a bit confused now as to why is this franklin actually not running away from me so he ended up in a situation where he was just staring at this Franklin dead on and the Franklin looked at him and it was a oh, brave Franklin I must be honest and it was just this kind of dead stare off and then the Franklin basically just walked away and Tumbo looked there very perplexed as to what had just happened and how in on earth had this Franklin ignored him so quickly and, and not really been too scared of him I think he got a bit of a fright that the Franklin didn't actually fly away like normal now I'm going to try and see if I can't get a better position from where I am. It's just the only gap that I can see is so close to him that I don't want him to run. You can see just in front here, this little gap through there is the only one that I can really punch through. The rest has got fallen over trees everywhere. Although I see another one that we can take, folks. Let's try that one. I actually didn't notice this part. I thought there was a fallen over stump here, but it's actually not too bad. So we're going to just try and get around here. Hopefully, once we get on the other side of him, it should be nice and open and we should be able to see him perfectly. And I think what's happening is he's starting to now find an area to lie down for the day. It's a nice shady little section he's got himself into there. And so I think maybe, just maybe, that might be where he's going to rest and wait for Tundi to come back again. Let's see. There we go. Yep. We've decided this is where he's going to lie down. Just hold on, Ferg. I'm almost there. Now, of course, old Wendy turns like the Titanic ship at this stage, so she really doesn't turn very easily. And so you've got to kind of do 10-point turns to go where Rusty would go in one turn. Let's hold on, Ferg. We're almost there. There we go. How's that, Ferg? Is that good? So you can see he's got himself into a nice little shady spot from a bush willow and an apple leaf. And that is going to be the perfect place to lounge and rest for the rest of the day. Oh, and look at this big yawn. You can see his teeth are still very white because he's so young still. He hasn't got that sort of yellow tinge that the teeth get as they get a little bit older. And you can see now a bit of grooming that's taking place. So this is just to get rid of all the ticks and mites and grass seeds and burrs that he's picked up while walking through all of this grass and from here he's probably like i say going to have a nice rest but isn't this exciting guys i know the fact that karula has gone is is not a nice thought and it's and it's one that we've a lot of you have been struggling with but the fact is at least her lineage is continuing and and tandy is part of karula's whole lineage and if there was a female to move in Besides Shongile, 
I think Tundi for me would be the one that I would have chosen. So for her to be spending a little bit more time in this area is really a very cool situation for us. So Roshni, you say I'm smitten by Tumba the poser. Well, most definitely. He is such a cool leopard and he goes up on termite mounds and up trees and seems to always just want to pose for everybody and that's why I like him. He's he's not shy and reclusive and he does his kind of thing and, and he seems to be quite a character. Just from the few times that I've watched him, he's always up to something, chasing things and seems to just want to have a good time wherever he goes and that's why I like him. I, that, he's just got some little sort of airs and graces about him that make me happy which is good so i am indeed smitten and particularly because we've got leopard on juma which is always a good thing and you know it's, it was a worry particularly with karula going missing that we would start our leopard sightings would maybe start to take a downturn a little bit but if we've got this little guy around and tundi and if tundi is going to spend more time here then you know potentially he, the the time frame between her and and tumba leaving it will be within the next year and you never know maybe she starts to settle here and she'll be the female that will start to see having cubs on juma again so you know it's it's a it's a positive process and, and one that at least is some encouragement and some hope that we will have a dominant female that potentially could produce cubs on Juma because right now at the moment as it stands we don't have that we know that Shadow spends a lot of her time in Arethusa and south of the boundary and little Shongile is still a little bit young to be mating even though we know that she can potentially mate to two years that's still a year away and so it's going to be a long time until little Shongile produces cubs and she's still got to forge a territory of her own and and so the hope i suppose lies with tundi at this stage that she's going to spend more time up here and actually end up taking this sort of southeastern corner of juma and that will be fantastic it would be what would be ideal is if little shongile could take the northern section so from quarantine northwards and then we'd have tundi and tumba down in the southeast and shadow in the southwest that would be an ideal situation don't you all agree and you can see how he longingly looks around for Tandy to come back. White Lady Earn. Now, yesterday you asked us to do a one word tweet, and I actually didn't see your one word tweet, so maybe you can let me know what your one word tweet was from yesterday. But you want to know what it feels like to have little Tumba looking into our eyes, much like he is right now. Well, it's a difficult feeling to describe. It's, I said yesterday when a leopard looks at you, it's almost like they analyze the deepest part of you and, and kind of look through everything and can tell exactly what you're made of and who you are as a person. That's how I feel about it. I mean, maybe it's not that case, but that's how I feel. But Tumba to me has got the most striking eyes. I don't know what it is about him. I think it's the darkness that he's got around the sort of fringes of his eyes. Most leopards have a little bit more light color there and then the fact that his eyes are so light in contrast to those dark round circles it just makes his eyes that much more piercing and when he looks at you there's just something magical about it and spending time with a leopard and being able to sit and watch one and for them to be looking at you is just the most amazing thing and and it's a special 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 sight well special privilege to be able to do all of this and we are so fortunate to be able to not only be here but to share this with all of you at home and make sure that we bring this to people all across the world and people then can admire the beauty of of what the wild animals in africa are and it's it's, it's a very very big privilege to be out here and to spend time particularly with the little cats like tamba and tandi so we're very very fortunate So Anna, you're wondering if Tumba's eyes are the final color that they'll turn. Well, it's difficult to say. He's still young, but I think so. I think these are about what we're going to see. They might actually lighten a little bit as he gets older, but I would imagine that this is his final color that he's going to end up with, which they are quite haunting, aren't they? They remind me a little bit of Anderson's eyes. Anderson's got a bit more of a blue tinge than what Tumba's got, but he's got these lighter colored eyes as well, and he's very pretty. Now you can see he's watching me because I move my hand, so I'm going to stop moving my hand because I don't want him to get scared of us or in any way and we're just going to sit tight and lower our voices a little bit so he gets a little bit more comfortable you can see he's not quite sure about this presence he's watching us very very carefully 
And so I think if we just sit still for a while and lower our voices, you'll start to take it a little bit easier again. And that little pink nose of his as well, I'm sure that's in time, is going to start to fade as well. Although, we know that with Shadow, her pink nose has lasted all through her life. And even Tundi's nose is not the darkest nose you'll find out here. She's got a slightly pink nose too. So maybe it's a family trait and we'll end up with a situation where little Tumba will keep his pink nose as he gets older. But you can see there's not too much darkening happening there just yet. You'll find on Hosanna, Hosanna's already got black spots developing towards the edges of his nose. So Nikki, you say his eyes remind you of Mvula's eyes. I can see why you say that. Mvula also had these striking, striking eyes. And when Mvula was younger, his eyes were amazing. They were almost like an aquamarine color. They were very, very pretty. But I find Tumba's eyes just slightly more green than what you see on Mvula's eyes. Mvula's have a more blue tinge than Tumba's. Tumba's tend to have a little bit more green in them. And he's, for the, in that reason, is unique to me. It doesn't really strike me as much as Mvula like quarantine does i don't know why but the photos that i've seen of quarantine always make me think of mvula and even um little kanuma as well had that sort of look of mvula now we're going to sit with our beautiful little boy as he just enjoys the shade of this bush willow and while we do that let's go all the way back to jamie who's not at a very peaceful scene at all but rather a more gory one